Okay, so here's a quick little video on my uh, drum editing workflow here. So the first step um, <coughs> is to solo the drums you need to use. In this case, it's just kick and snare. Kick and snare is soloed. The levels are about equal so that the transients will show up at about the same level. Um, I don't know. Okay, so I'll render this to a stem. I'll just render the time selection for this example. P bring that back down. I want to group all these tracks now. So I'll add that to the group. I'll select this without selecting the whole group by using my modifier that I explained. Dynamic split. I'm going to turn off the grid just because it makes it easier to see where these lines are. Just sort of go through quickly. It looks like it's about right. Um, there's not like uh, you know an overbearing amount of transients or anything like this would obviously be wrong, right? That's way too many hits. So adjust this. That looks like it's picking up most of them. It's never going to be perfect, right? So just do the best you can. Uh, I'll split. Turn the grid back on. Make sure that you have crossfade media items when editing turned off and trim content behind media items when editing turned off as well. And I'll just start quantizing. So I'll select a bunch, move it to near the grid, quantize. Select this stuff, move it so it's pretty close to where it needs to be. Select this chunk. See, this stuff's all pretty good. So imagine we had this situation though where there was this extra random split here. What you would do is select these two items and then run this action. Heal splits and items. This is just the default menu. Ignore that I have to go all the way down here. This should show up as soon as you hit items. So you just hit heal. I have that set to H. So all I have to do is select those. H and the split goes away. Quantize. Now say you had a situation where this split for the snare hit actually was detected like here. And that happens sometimes. So you'll be here and you'll see, oh crap, this snare split is in the wrong place. So just zoom in, hold shift, that's what my modifier is anyways, to ignore s snapping, and just dual trim, and just put it where it needs to be. And then quantize. Um, keep going through, quantize. All this stuff will go pretty easily, quantize. Quantize. Okay, and right here, we're missing a hit, and one of these hits is in the wrong place. This hit should actually be here. And there's another kick hit here. So I would just click and split, and then move that until it's in the right place. Put my grid to 16th. Quantize. Quantize. Go back to 8th for now. Quantize. Quantize, go here, sixteenths, we gotta add another split here, add the split, and then we'll just sort of shuffle it around until it looks like it's where it needs to be. This one's a little late too, so move that a little earlier. Quantize all this stuff, and that's done. The first step anyways. So the next step is to fill the gaps. So you wanna select all these items. The easiest way to do that is just with the marquee. Select all of them. Then you want to open up the fill gaps dialog. Um, I'm normally just using a, a, an action that just runs the default settings. I usually leave stretch off. I just do it just like Beat Detective. So trigger pad 5 milliseconds, crossfade 5 milliseconds. Those are pretty much the only options that matter. Hit OK. And then we can look through. And it created all our crossfades for us and removed any overlaps. Right. So the beauty of uh, having the crossfade, auto crossfades and trim behind disabled is that it lets me do stuff like this. I can just like move stuff behind stuff and over top of stuff. And it doesn't actually delete what's behind it. You can see that. It doesn't automatically crossfade. It doesn't automatically trim. So it lets me move my hits wherever I want to move them without worrying about other hits getting affected until I run this, the fill action, which cleans all that stuff up. So everything's back where it was. I'll just select all those. I have uh, this action here. 
fill gaps, uh, fill gaps, use last settings to control F. So if I just hit control F, it'll just fill it all and we're in business. So now we can listen to that and it should sound pretty tight. Right, pretty cool. Sometimes you'll run into stuff that doesn't sound great. In those cases, you really just have to go in manually and you know adjust it, fix it, copy in a different hit if it if it's not gonna work, whatever. There's lots of things you can do. But as far as an automatic process goes, it's really, really fast. And as long as you're not dealing with some really, really terrible drummer, you can usually get a song done in about an hour at the longest. So yeah, I hope uh that helps. Any more questions, just let me know.